this is uh, part four in a series of basic training videos to help you learn how to build circuits. In order for you to build circuits, you need to know the fundamentals. I mean, you really need to know the fundamentals of building circuits, which means you need to know how to transfer energy from a power source to a load. So I'm going to set up a system here to help guide you through this process. But you need a background. You need the basic concepts so that if I give you a situation, you'll know what to do. And you can follow these steps for any type of problem. And you must learn to think this way in all your work. Let's say that I give you a component like a component name because you've been in engineering classes for a long time so you have a lot of components in your head and we're only going to talk about final load components like LED lamp uh, buzzer you know motor Relay is a good example. Um, what else be a good example? Uh, speaker. Speaker is good. Okay. Um, let's see. Heater. any of these components. In a nutshell though, I can simplify this by saying that these components have two terminals and usually they're labeled as plus minus. Now some of the components does not have a plus minus. They just have open and you can use plus or minus. But normally you can assign it as plus or minus. So I'll call that our load. Now Suppose I give you a component name and I ask you to design a circuit to operate that component. Well, step number one, even if I give you the word LED, that's not going to be enough because once again, there are thousands and thousands upon thousands of LEDs. So you have to make a choice. You have to choose your component. Now you can go to catalog, you can go online, you can go to special websites, but you got to choose component because remember, I only gave you the component name. I didn't give you the actual component. It's up to you to choose. Now you may be given some additional criteria to decide which component to use, but for the most part, you have to choose the final component that you're going to use. Number two, once you have chosen your component, you must, you must get the data sheet for it. You must get the data sheet for that component. Uh, or you must get the specifications from the website. And what specifications are you going to be looking for? The specifications that you're going to be looking for are voltage and current. Sometimes they may give it to you in the form of voltage and power or current and power. And you need to know whether you're dealing with a DC component or whether you're dealing with an AC component because you need to know the format of the voltage or the format of the energy that this component might need. Number four, you're going to need an energy source.
Now in the lab, we have variable power supplies, but when you actually are designing a circuit to be used by a consumer, you have to decide on power supplies that are available in the market, or you have to design your own special power supply for that component. But you do need an energy source, and you need to think about how that energy source is going to be transferred to the load. Now we know how energy sources are transferred to a load. Energy sources are transferred to a load using wire. That's how energy is transferred from the power supply, from the power supply to the load. Basically, we have something that looks like this. We have a power supply, we have a load, and both of those devices have two terminals. And we simply join the, the correct wire using wire. We just join them together. And we have a completed circuit where energy comes out of the power supply, flows through the load, and then returns back to the negative part of the power supply. And that energy forms what we call a closed loop circuit. A closed loop circuit. It looks like it's a closed loop. It's closed and it's a loop. Now this is the basic, this is the fundamental. Now, from the data sheet, the data sheet will tell you what is the voltage of the load that's needed to operate, which means that the energy source over here must be equal to the load. That's the very beginning. That's the very basics. And there are hundreds of other things that you must consider when you design this or when you connect this together. But for the most part, you can get into the lab and make this happen simply by getting the correct information from the data sheet about the load, finding the appropriate power support source, finding some wire, and making the connection. And you will get something that's very exciting. You will be able to see something or you might be able to hear something or you might be able to feel something. All of that's very exciting. So you need to save this in your brain. You need to follow those steps and memorize those steps to get you started in circuit design.